I'm getting a lot of questions about my camera settings so I thought I'm going to talk a little bit about my main settings for wildlife photography and also my customization of some of the knobs that I'm using. I have two cameras. I have the D500 here and I also got the D4S here mounted on my 500 millimeter f4. So uh, depending on how uh, close I can get to the subject, uh, I am choosing the camera out of that. And uh, using the D500 uh, with the 500, I got a 750 millimeters. So I got a lot of reach and if I use a teleconverter on top of that, I got a thousand and fifty millimeter and that is a lot of reach. And I really love that versatility to, to have the possibility to get a, that closer, especially on birds or wildlife that are more and more shy than uh, other species. And if I can get close, like if, for example, in the forest with the red squirrel, I am using the D4S especially there in the winter time because the forest is such a dark place when the sun is not rising too high and maybe it's overcast and uh, it's so hard to like get at the shutter speed high enough and therefore i need to use a little higher iso and i don't want to push the d500 too much on the iso because uh when you're getting around 3200, I think in my opinion you get a little bit too much noise in the images But uh, around 1600 from and 2000 it's okay to use but um, I don't like to go higher than that But on my D4S uh, 6400 is the limit there. I don't go higher than that uh, I can do but I think there is a little bit too much noise especially um, if there is a lot of dark places in the images. Let's talk about my main settings for the camera. On both of the cameras, I'm using the A priority. So I am controlling the aperture and the camera will control the shutter speed. This is a mode that I have been using all the way back and when I started photography in 2010. And I'm just used to that and everything is on auto in my uh, mind, mindset and my fingers are using in that mode there. Sometimes I use manually when I know that the light is not changing at all. I might be a little bit stubborn here but I'm so used to the A priority mode and I'm getting the result I want. And I think that is the main goal of photography. And 90% of the time I'm using the the lowest f-stop that I can have on the uh, on the lens itself. So on the 500 millimeter, which I use almost all the time, uh, the lowest is f4. And uh, what I like about that is that the really uh, shallow depth of field that it provides me. So I get that smooth out of focus backgrounds. And also if some uh, thing creates a reflection in the in background, uh, especially when you are photographing against uh, the sun, uh, you can get some cool reflection in the water. If, uh, if you're having um, like F8, uh, the, the reflection will be a little bit weird. But the other good thing is, of course, to, it lets more light in, so I'm able to get a higher shutter speed and um, shooting small birds that is essential to have enough shutter speed to freeze the action they are over, all over the place especially the smaller they are uh, the more hyperactive they are for example the gold crest and then i want the high enough shutter speed to control and freeze those movements in the birds and to do that i need um, more light coming in not to get too high ISO. But in some occasion I, I'm using a higher f-stop like 5.6 and f8 and actually also f11. I don't know if you have seen the video me photographing the golden plover and one of the pictures that I really really like 
I use f11 and not just the whole bird in in focus but also the environment that it stands on it had a lot of texture and um, and uh, like grass sticking up in different kind of angles so I wanted as much as possible of that sharp and therefore I needed to use f11 and the light was good and I was close enough so I didn't have to like uh, crop too much so therefore that was a perfect uh, situation where I use f11 but most of the cases I'm using f4 uh, when it comes to uh, autofocus, I'm using the continuous autofocus on my gun, which always focusing and trying to uh, to hit the bird or the animal. And uh, depending on if there is something in the foreground, uh, I'm shooting through grass or uh, some branches, uh, I'm using the single focus point. But if I'm trying to photograph birds in flight, for example, I needed a little bit more uh, focus points around that can catch in the bird. Uh, so depending on the situation, which uh, I'm choosing a single uh, focus point or like group focus points. Some of you have asked me about auto ISO. And for me, I have always used manual ISO. That is just uh, the way I have learned photography. And uh, I know many of you say you should try the auto ISO. And I have tried that as well, but I'm not comfortable and I'm not uh, relaxed enough to use that. And uh, so I'm liking to control that myself. But when I'm using the D4S, the ISO button is a little bit weird placed. Uh, it's placed on the bottom of the camera and if I want to change that in a hurry, that's yeah, not gonna happen. Uh, I need to leave the eye away from the camera and down and look at the um, ISO button there to, to change the ISO. Uh, it doesn't have, like the D500 uh, was really great when it comes out. They changed the position of the ISO button from the side up to right beside the record button. And that is a perfect place for having the ISO. So I can change that in a split second if I want to do that. So therefore I customized the D4S to, um, to have the ISO uh, button from the bottom up to the record button. So when I am shooting photo and I press the record button, I can actually change the ISO. Uh, rapidly and that is really really handy when you are changing things in a hurry. Another thing that I have customized checking the image if it's sharp or uh, if everything is okay in the image. Uh, I have placed the preview button for the uh, pictures uh, from the left side over to this little knob here. Uh, and that's really more handy when you are like having heavy lenses and you're supporting the lens with the left hand and you have the camera in the right hand. Instead of laying the camera down to get to see the, the picture, I'm um, actually uh, just have can like put my camera down and take my eye out of the, the camera and press that button and then I can see the image uh, quickly. So uh, it's a lot more quicker to view the pictures um, before going on uh, further to photograph. Other than that, I'm measuring the light in the whole picture. I don't use spot metering. I'm using the matrix, I think it's called matrix metering, where I um, meter the whole image. Now, when I'm using the eye priority, uh, I have said it on the other videos, if something is too bright or the subject is in shadow and the background is lit up by the sun, I need to compensate for that. So I'm using the plus uh, minus compensate, uh, compensation to, uh, to have um, the control of uh, the light coming into the camera. And someone maybe think that is a little bit awkward and takes time, but it's just built in my fingers. So I'm just used to that and uh, maybe I'm stubborn, but yeah, that's the way I have. This is my main settings and I've, of course I need to uh, adapt uh, to the situation. Uh, the point for me is that you use the settings that you are comfortable with 
and can get the result that you want but uh, yeah uh, not very long now I'm going to double fjell back to photograph the mask oxen and I can't wait for doing that I'm not gonna be able to go out and photograph in the field before that so uh, therefore I wanted to um, end this video here we're talking a little bit about uh, inspiration a lot of you guys are stuck in lockdown for the moment and not be able to go out and it can be a hard hard time so i want to also leave you with a little inspiration on youtube this is a channel which is in measured in subscribers not very big but he deserves a lot more so his name is gunnar dressler he lives in norway but he is from germany so I watched his channel for a while now and I really like how he's crafting his video and how he is uh, really trying to expand his knowledge about photography of wildlife and birds and just going 100% into that. And you can see that through his video so you can like follow his journey uh, from the start where he is now and I really really appreciate that. And he, looks like a really nice person as well so uh yeah a shout out for Gunnar uh you just keep creating videos and make everyone happy and if you don't know he, who he is go over and check his channel and subscribe to him and give him some love i'll leave a link in the description so you can check him out this is it for now and uh, i will see you uh soon and i'm can't wait to share this trip on Double Fjell and yeah, see you then.